Hey folks, welcome to yet another episode of The Shot with Cosmos with Cosmos. And today we have a toast to Liliana Sergey 75190, all around badass. Oh, okay. And bop the table for you at home to take a shot with us unless you're driving. You can still uh, take a shot with us if you're driving. Just one second. Give me. Make sure that your driver does not do it. Yeah, get a little orange. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, those put the oranges out for us for chasers, and these are fabulous. Mm -hmm. I want to eat these instead. What? Now I have orange. This tequila. isn't tequila, folks. Come no, on. but my goodness, was the orange good? Uh, okay, here we go. I can't reach it. Liliana <laughs> Sergey. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no, that one. All right. So. It's not. Liliana, uh, so she's a bit of a detour from what we usually do here in Cosmos with Cosmos. It's not purely astronomy, but it wraps around in the end. So just okay. kind of bear with us <laughs> right. and enjoy this Hold ride. Hold on to our butts. Hold on to your butts. Mm. Liliana, uh, she was born in Milan in 1930. Not where I thought, but okay. No, Milan, yes. Uh, her mother died when Liliana was an infant, so her father became both her mom and dad. Okay. And life was all right in Italy in the 1930s. Um, until. Okay. I'm yes. Like, um, until 1938, um, when Benito Mussolini passed the racial laws discriminating against Italian Jews. Oh, great. Oh, time. yeah. Now, Liliana didn't know she was Jewish um, until she was expelled from school as an eight year old for being Jewish. Oh, my gosh. Um, fast forward to 1943. And Mussolini was overthrown and placed under arrest, and Italy signed an armistice with the Allies. Yeah. He wasn't just placed under arrest. Well, <laughs> we're not there yet. Okay. Because northern Italy, including Milan, uh, they were quickly occupied by the Nazis mm -hmm. and put Mussolini back in charge. Okay. All right. And so Liliana and her father tried escaping to Switzerland, but they were arrested at the border. Uh, they were imprisoned for 90 days before boarding a train in Milan. And um, later on, Liliana said of boarding the train as a 13-year-old, it only happens to crazy people. You leave without knowing where you're going. Everyone else in every station around the world leaves knowing where they're headed to. The train stopped in Auschwitz. Oh, no. Yeah, I just had a feeling this was <laughs> not. Oh, yeah, the, the trains uh, in the early 40s. The, the train good. stopped in Auschwitz. Mm. Liliana was separated from her father. Of course, the mom and the dad, and she never saw him again. Oh, oh man. Wow. That's... And, yeah. Okay. She refused to talk about experiences in death camp until 1991. And that is when she revealed that she worked as a slave in a munitions, fa munitions factory, uh, which, working inside, likely saved her life from the harsh, freezing outdoor conditions oh, wow. of Auschwitz. Um, over a year later... In the camp. Over a year in Auschwitz went by when she lived there. Uh, the Soviets were close, so the Nazis forced Liliana and 60,000 other prisoners on a death march in northern Germany. Okay. Uh, she was forced. This to, is 45 ish? Yeah, uh, 1943, yeah. Okay. Uh, she was forced to walk hundreds of miles in freezing cold and stopped at three different concentration camps along the way. Oof. When finally she saw U.S. troops on the road handing out fruits. And then she said, to this day, apricots, to me, taste like freedom. Oh, we well, were apricots. <laughs> and, of course, the next 50 years went by, and Liliana did not talk about her experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, she had three children, did not once bring up the camps to the children, didn't wow. talk about it to the husband, even though she met her husband, saw the tattoo, and she said, I know what you went through, but still did not talk about it. Wow. It was, it was difficult. So as she explained it, uh, she said, I was a little girl who came back from hell, from whom obedience and resignation was demanded. Soon I learned to keep my tragic moments and deep sadness to myself. Nobody understood me. I was the one who had to adapt to a world that wanted to forget the painful events. But she ended the silence in 1991 uh, by touring school, schools and telling young people when it happened. Um, her story was provided in books, interviews, made subject to movies and historical research. Uh, so she said of talking to audiences, When I found the strength to testify, I looked into the eyes of young listeners. I looked, I looked to them still. 
and I see in them future candles of memory. Oh, wow. damn. Wow. Absolutely. Damn. Uh, so she was recognized for her outstanding patriotic merits in the social field and made Senator for Life in Italy in 2018. Senator for Life. Wow. And 2018, mind you, was the 80th anniversary of those same racial laws. The first thing she did, because when you're Senator for Life, it's not just an honorary title. Like, you can actually be a senator. Yeah. Yes. So the first thing she did was propose the establishment of a commission on racism, anti-Semitism, and incitement to hatred and violence. It was approved. Yay! It better have been. Well, the next month, oh. she was targeted and threatened and placed under police protection. She did not stop. She Good. said, she's 87, she wow. said, Those who, like me, have lived through the war are used to the idea of and death and the need to resist and be strong and move forward. So Liliana called out, she continued to call out the education minister for removing history in high school matriculation exams and brought a bill into parliament to ban fascism and Nazi propaganda. Oh, good. Oh, good. yes. Oh. More death threats followed. Of course they did. Of course they did. In a single day, she received 200 death threats. Wow. So what did Liliana do? She led a fucking march with thousands of yes. people down Milan's main road who chanted her name. And at that speech, she said, we can leave hatred to the anonymous keyboards. Let us now talk about love. Oh, wow. So moving forward to 2021, the International Astronomical Union took note of her actions and experiences when Italian astronomer Paolo Molaro uh, realized the IAU's designated number for a new minor planet matched the con concentration Ooh, wow. camp tattoo of Liliana, 75190. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna make this me is a multi-shot episode. Yeah. God. The IAU agreed and honored her with the name of the minor planet Sergei Liliana. Oh, Jesus. She wrote in response to the honor that her fate is tied to the stars, that she would stay alive while her little star shone. And Liliana finished with this. E quindi Yoshimo e ribadere la stelle. And those are the final words to Dante's Inferno, meaning, and thence we emerge to see again the stars. Damn. To Liliana oh. Sergey. Yes. You know what? Second shot. Oh, Let's God. Pour it. All right. Jeez, okay. And that, by the way, is a subject of my very next tattoo, which I gave this double meaning. Okay. okay. And yes, yes, that was it. That's. That... Maybe you gave a little bit more backstory in the. Yeah. So, so I know, we're going beyond the shot at this point, yeah. but I was recently in Amsterdam and I had a good time and I read a story and I thought this would be a great tattoo to get the final line of Dante's Inferno. I wasn't able to, but I still plan to, but that is now the full story. Oh, so second yeah. shot to Liliana, Liliana, who is still alive, by the way, 91 years old. You go, girl. Absolutely. Badass, badass. Cheers. Cheers.